morning guys uh i have class in 20 minutes and then i don't know what i'm gonna do i'm really sleepy i might have to take a nap before i do any reading today but yeah good morning <laughs> all right see you later in the day okay so here's the deal y'all um i haven't read anything i've read some fan fiction but i have yet to start the freaking book um, I'm gonna hang up my laundry, because I finally did laundry today. Then I'm possibly gonna read the book, because, like, it's already six o'clock, but Lord knows when I'm gonna eat dinner, because I'm not hungry. I have, like, zero appetite. It's not even funny. I don't even want to eat shapes. I just have no appetite at all. Like, the thought of eating something's making me feel a bit ill. Which is usually a sign for something, if you know what I mean. So. Yeah, today's not been a good reading day. I've been stuck in Westeros. I've been not reading nothing but Game of Thrones fan fictions. Because I need my stacks. I need my stacks. Oh. But none of them are fulfilling the need. None of them. And I don't want to go and read my old faves because I've started memorizing them. <laughs> They're just that fabulous. So, so that's me today. Sorry. This is going to be a very boring video to watch when it's uploaded. <laughs> okay, so um, I finally got into my book, The Upside Down and Unrequited Love. As you can see, I'm very far into it. I'm on to page 101 already going a lot faster than Game of Thrones, let me tell you. Clash of Kings, it's going a lot faster. And I'm loving it, I'm loving the characters. Uh, I need to take a shower, otherwise I wouldn't be stopping, because this is just so good. I don't think I'm going to be stopping until it's finished. Though I already have opinions. One, she best end up with Reed. She best end up with Reed. Two, where is my Reed? Okay, literally I never fall for fictional characters, but there's been like one or two others in shows where I'm like, okay, I... where are you in real life? So one is Henry Foss from Sanctuary, and the other is a character in Hogwarts Mystery, who my character is technically almost dead. We've been on three dates, okay, three. I swear the next romantic side quest in that game best be he being my boyfriend. Because is Melda already tried to make moves and hell to that now? But anyway, my point being, this Reed guy, okay, he's a Tolkien nerd, and he has the Game of Thrones shirt and five cats. Okay, yes, he lives with his mom because obviously they're, I think they're seniors in high school. Um, but they have five cats. Like, where is my Reed? Where is my Reed that loves Tolkien and the Song of Ice and Fire and has cats? Just it, replace the fact that he's Jewish with Christian and literally my dream person. Where are you? Let's go in. <laughs> Clearly I already have a favorite character. I know, I'm not at all biased. <laughs> I do love Molly though. I do. And I'm so doing a book review for this book because it is so good. <sighs> and she released a novella with the characters and the characters from Simon vs. Homo Safe New Agenda. And I'm like, obviously I need to get that. So that will be ordered later tonight when it gets past midnight and I get paid. Because this is just reminding me of all the reasons why I need to read that book. Ah, <laughs> oh, Becky Abitali, you are my favourite contemporary author. Like, okay, it, it would either be this or the person who wrote Red, White, and Royal Blue, but they've only wa written one book so far, so I reserve judgment on that one, because while the first book was unbelievably amazing, doesn't mean the next book won't be. This is the third book I've read by Becky Albertelli, and it's amazing. So, I have faith. And I generally don't like romance stories or 
contemporaries, but her, I thrive, I live, I love. Oh, funny. Okay, I'll get back to you later. Okay, as you can tell, I've had my shower, um, and I'm not stopping, but something's just happened, and oh my goodness, I'm pissed. I am so pissed. Okay, I'm on page 226, and Olivia, her best friend, has broken up with her boyfriend. Well, he dumped her, but you know, they're over because he's a douche canoe and did not deserve her. Because he wanted, he didn't want to be exclusive, despite the fact they've been dating since the 8th grade. So, yeah. But, now it looks like she might want to date Reed. And I'm like, Olivia, darling, from what I've seen of you, you're awesome. But you are not dating Reed. Okay? You are, there's no way on planet Earth you are dating Reed. Well, Molly has a crush on him. Molly is finally prepared to make a move on a boy. She's finally prepared to do this, and Reed is perfect. You are not getting in the way of this. I swear there's about to be a sleepover, and I, and Will and Matt are going to be there as well, and I swear, I swear, if Olivia kisses, him, kisses Reed, or Molly gets in her head to try and make him jealous or something and kisses Will... I'm going to be so upset. Like, I'm this close to jumping to the end of the book because I'm that desperate to know if Molly ends up with Reed. Because if she doesn't end up with Reed, this book is cancelled. This will be like the Malak breakup all over again. <laughs> They've got to get together, okay? They are so cute and have so much chemistry. Okay, just if they don't get together, I'm going to be so mad. So pissed. I'm this. I'm on the almost on the verge of tears as a result of this. I'm not okay. Anyway, get back to you on that. I gotta finish this book. Okay, as you may or may not tell, because this camera's got an interesting quality, I am literally crying because <laughs> it's pathetic. I don't cry over romance books. I only cry when characters die. But I'm crying. <laughs> Because this sleepover was a disaster, and you want to be a disaster. It's a disaster, okay? <laughs> Will got jealous because Molly and Reed are all being cute, and so we had to go and sit next to her and hold her wrist, and just, and they both slept next to her. And when she woke up, he was that Reed was having a moment with Olivia. And then she gets in trouble with her mum because it was alcohol at the sleepover and she didn't even drink. She just had orange juice. She didn't have a drink. And now she's in trouble. She And she doesn't want Will. She just wants Reed. She just wants Reed. I'm crying over a freaking romance book. I'm not the type of person to do this. I didn't even cry for Malik. I got upset that you cry. Why am I crying? Maybe I just really identify with this girl. <sighs> this doesn't get sorted out. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Okay, so it's 12.40 at night. I think by this point you will have figured out I'm a complete night owl. I am. I'm a complete night owl. And I finished it. 340 pages. So easy to read. Aside from my emotional meltdown earlier. Uh, and I'll need a quick break to take a shower. But... It was so good. I loved it. There was, I did, yeah, I had an emotional meltdown when I thought they weren't going to get together. I get to not read 200 pages into this book for them not to get together. But fortunately, they have awesome friends. Well, she has awesome friends. We haven't met this Douglas person yet. 
But Abby is my hero because she basically is like, have you told him that you like him? Have you told him this? And then proceeds to get her to tell him that she likes him and not Will. And Will does not like her. It got really complicated with Will. Turns out Will likes, um... Well, he likes Cassie's girlfriend. Uh... What's her name? Mina. Sorry, there's a lot of girls in this book. Um, turns out he likes Mina, so there's a whole other kettle of fish. But... Point is, he doesn't like her, so that was good. And Olivia didn't like him. Like, she thinks he's really, really cute, and she could like him. But from the minute they spoke to each other, all they could do is talk about Molly. And she was like, yeah, this is not going to happen for me. But you know what? Molly is a good friend, and she deserves this, okay? She deserves to have someone who likes her. <laughs> There is a true friend right there. There is a true friend. Oh. And they're together. And the last chapter was at the wedding of the mums. And it was so cute. And perfect. And now it's just left me with one thing. Where is my reed? I want a reed. Okay, I want the boyfriend who is geeky and sweet and goes to Renfest. Where's Lord of the Rings and Game of Thrones t-shirts? Where are they? Where for Atta? But, um, yeah. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I did identify with Molly a lot. Um... Except, like, on the fact she said 26 un unrequited crushes, and I'm like, okay, I think I've maybe crushed on three people in my life. Like, proper crushes, I think it was three. There's been a couple of people who people thought I had a crush on, when really I was just really excited about the friendship and having a new friend, but because I was at boarding school, and apparently people of the opposite sex can't just be friends at boarding school and things got awkward on one occasion because he was convinced I liked him. He made it perfectly clear he did not like me in that way. And I was just like, I was so confused. And then I felt awkward around him. So I was like, am I doing something that makes people think I like him? It was just a whole nightmare. Point B. I've only had like three. Two of which know I had a crush on them. The other one worked it out. I wasn't I wasn't subtle, I was twelve. I think I was twelve. I don't know how old I was. But point is this is a very good book. Highly recommend reading it. Five out of five stars. You are the first contemporary book that ever got me to cry, so congratulations. Like, the only other romance novel, like, that was romance-heavy that I ever remember crying over was The Mark of the Lion. It's a Christian book series, and it's set in ancient Rome around the time when all the Christians were being killed. So it's after Jesus has been killed and the disciples are starting to be killed. So we actually hear about Peter's death in that. It's not a pleasant death. And I did cry in that. Admittedly not because the couple wasn't getting together. No. I thought someone had died. And it was traumatising. So yeah, congratulations. This is the first book that ever made me cry that wasn't over someone's death. So congratulations, Meg Avitali. You got me you got me in tears. You got me in freaking tears. But they're together and that's what matters. And in my mind, they went and got married. I mean, they're 17, so maybe they didn't. But my aunt and uncle got married out of high school, so. Hmm. And live in my delusions. The one thing I will say is I was led to believe this is in the same universe as Simon vs. the Homo sapiens agenda. I did not see one glimpse of that. Like, not one glimpse. I may need to reread that book, though.
I may have missed something. Anyway, so I've read two books on my TBR list, the two biggest ones. Now I just need to read the other three, which I have less desire to read, to be perfectly honest with you. Because two of them are straight up factual books, and one of them is a very depressing topic, so I'm not looking forward to reading it. Just, I need to read it to be better informed, but I'm probably going to get very irritated and very angry about it. Anyway, so that was me, and yeah, I think I'll end this video here. I'll do book talk for that book, just like I'll do a book talk for the other books I'm reading. So I'm taking detailed notes. And what I've been doing is at the end of each chapter, I pause, write down the things that I thought were important in that chapter and my feelings, and then continue on with this one. I didn't really do that for the last five or six chapters, because literally, some of the chapters in this... are like this. That's the whole chapter. But, point is, it was excellent. Very easy to read. I need to get the next book, though. I'm ordering that tonight. I need it. Alright, anyway. So, if you enjoyed this video, like, comment, maybe even subscribe. And if this is Instagram, just give it a like. But only if you, if you genuinely like this video. Alright. Bye, guys.